All right, you guys, this is Ross. So I thought in today's video, we would do a tomato tasting. I have a couple of varieties here I've never tasted. One of which is actually one of my favorites. We have a pink Berkeley green tie dye. That doesn't make any sense. It's the green Berkeley tie dye. Um, we also have Captain Lucky here, which has a pretty good reputation actually as being a really good tomato. And then this is, um, pork chop, which was bra uh, bred by Brad Gates. It's getting a little old at this point, so I figure I gotta eat it. Um, it's one of my favorites now of this new tomato trial that I've been doing, where I've been really trialing um, <clears throat> many different varieties of tomatoes to try to figure out if there's any that can really become my favorites. And this is just a glimpse, a shot of the uh, tomato plants. Some of them are quite productive. Others, um, you can kind of see, are just like taken over at this point. They're getting above the uh, above the trellises, then they're kind of climbing over the trellises. They're um, they're basically going to produce nonstop. It's really only um, September third, and they will go all the way to frost. So I have nothing to worry about. Growing them vertically is such a great way to grow tomatoes. Um, you know, you don't get the individual production maybe you want on each individual plant, but you do get some really good success with growing a lot of food in a very small space. So let's try these. Um, I've been very curious about both of them, the Captain Lucky and the, the Green Berkeley tie-dye. This pork chop really is just, in my opinion, kind of like um, a benchmark is what I'm using it as, you know, because I've already did a video, a separate video on this tomato. I really like it. I think it's got a lot of uh, great flavor. It reminds me a lot of the green zebra. Uh, Brad Gates really knows what he's doing, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm thinking, you know, if I just use such a good tomato as that, as like a benchmark, then I'll know as an idea of what is the quality. I mean, I don't even really even need it, but like I said, it's nice to uh, eat the food because it's gonna go bad, right? So let's get at least a good idea of what this a good tomato tastes like. By the way, it's a yellow or golden or orange tomato, however you wanna classify it. It's just really tasty. Very, very good. In fact, I could just eat this whole thing right now. I haven't eaten breakfast. It's obvious, I think, that it's one of my favorites. This green Berkeley tie-dye, historically, I like the pink Berkeley tie-dye, but I don't think it's a great tomato. It's a, it's a, it's a, much better tomato than most tomatoes that exist, but it doesn't, uh, it's in like a, a B class. You know, if there's an A class, the top best tomatoes, like this pork chop, the pink Berkeley is in a, in a B tier. So it's great, but it's just not, it's not my favorite. Here's the green Berkeley. I really like these green tomatoes. So that was a, really big deciding factor on why I should grow this. I'm also growing Aunt Ruby's German Green and uh, that one has yet to ripen. So we'll see if that I get to taste that one. But so far out of the green varieties I've tried, Green Zebra is the best. It just has that acidity, that zest that I'm looking for. That's not bad. Let me try this part up here, closer to the center, instead of the bottom. Yeah, that's a very good tomato, guys. Um, I want to highly recommend that, you know, because this tomato does remind me of that zest and that acidity of the green zebra. It's not as strong, but if you want a beefsteak like that, it's a great option. You know, I wouldn't consider 
green zebra like a slicer, I'd consider green zebra more of like a salad type, even just eating it fresh. Um, this has got a better texture for sandwiches, and I actually really like this one. I think this, I'll probably be growing this again. I'm a big fan of this tomato. This is an A-tier tomato as well. All right. I'll tell you what, Brad Gates just really knows what he's doing. Here's Captain Lucky. Oh, that's beautiful. So this is a bicolor. Usually the individual colors will represent different flavors and when you have a lot of colors kind of mixed in, it gives you a nice experience, nice flavor experience. So far, my favorite bicolor, though, is the, the uh, black pineapple or the Ananas Noir. That one really blew me away. That's good. A little watery. Whoa. It's got some earthy green flavor in there. So juicy. I can't believe how much water is in this. Yeah, I mean, I think I still like the black pineapple more. It's a good tomato. Didn't produce a ton. I mean, it's interesting, it's different. That's what these bicolors are. You know, they really give you a different take on a tomato. And uh, for my money, this is a very good tomato. A lot of people will be very happy with this thing. But I don't exactly recall having, remembering the experience of eating the, the black pineapple. So it'd be a little unfair to say that one of these two is better, but I do believe the black pineapple or the Ananas Noir is a little better than this. However, this is still very good. So this is like an A minus in terms of bicolors and the black pineapple is probably like an A plus. And uh, yeah, that's interesting. I'm glad I got to try these tomatoes, guys. I, I, uh, I'm not sure which of these I'm gonna grow again in terms of the overall trial. We're getting here really to the end and I've pretty much tried them all um, you know, all the different 50-ish varieties I planted and about 20 to 25 of them I made in a sauce to see how they would come out of sauce. We haven't tried the sauces yet. But in terms of fresh eating all these different tomato varieties, got to get my hats off to white tomasol, pork chop. Uh, the black pineapple was impressive. Pink brandywine is my favorite. Um, and even Goose Creek, I could probably give a little bit of a recommendation to. Uh, the Black Beauty, I think, has a nice earthiness to it. Um, it has like a fennel-like flavor. There's a licorice flavor in it. And yeah, I think that's, I think those are roughly the big ones. There may be one or two I'm missing that if you go back in some of my other videos, you'll see that there are some recommendations I've been making and uh, you know, I think I'll probably be growing them again, but in general, I may only grow roughly, if I was, I'm growing about four different tomato varieties now and sticking with four different tomato varieties right now. Um, but now this year I grew 50. So then next year, instead of growing 50, I'm gonna grow 50 again. I think that number of four, my four favorite tomato varieties probably go up to maybe if I can keep it down to seven or eight, I think I will. Or I may even, I may even stop somewhere around um, six, believe it or not. Because um, there's definitely some different tomatoes like this pork chop, the white tomasol, the Napa Chardonnay, even Barry's Crazy Cherry. They're just different enough to really um, make me think that it's not necessarily worth growing them because they're better than something I really like, but they're just different. Um, and maybe a bicolor, you throw in the Ananas Noir or something. Who knows? 
and I have to figure out the paste tomatoes too. So we'll see you guys soon, all right? Thank you. Take care, hit that subscribe button. Check out the other videos we've done now on tomatoes. See you for the next one. Take care.